Okay, uh, I wanted to address uh, right now the, the the notion of the oneness doctrine, the, the notion that believes that the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit are one in the same person, just exist in different modes. And there was a video that came across uh, called uh, something about done, it was done by the user named uh, False Doctrine, showing oneness believers throughout history. Um. It really misrepresented people like Polycarp, people like Ignatius of Antioch, people like Irenaeus. And I totally see why why false trinity doctrine, as a oneness believer, wants to have those three on on his side, so to speak. Because Polycarp and Ignatius were taught by the apostles, and Ignatius was taught by Polycarp. And as you know, a, as these guys go. So went the apostles. I think it's safe to say. So, with this in mind, I want to really take a look at the beliefs and writings of some of these gentlemen and see if they were really oneness believers. Uh, right now, here is the letter of Ignatius to the Philadelphians, and it starts off with Ignatius, who is also called Theophorus, to the Church of God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ, which is at Philadelphia in Asia, who has obtained mercy, etc. Doesn't sound like a very oneness statement. The Church of God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Um, something else he says. A little further down, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I just need to bring it up here. Just bear with me here. Ah, here we go. Here we go. I'm just going to have to start this thing over. Alright, this is chapter uh, 7. I've exhorted unity. Ignatius didn't want uh, Christians running off and listening to the docetists. They wanted to stay united with, with, with the visible, universal Catholic Church at the time. Um, <clears throat> he says, at the very end, Be the followers of Jesus Christ, even as he is of his Father. It is of his father not was jesus christ currently in the year 106 is a follower of god the father um so those are just two examples i know there's also another uh, there's another letter of ignatius where he talks about jesus be with the father you can't be with somebody and be the person that's ignatius here's polycarp <clears throat> um here is what Polycarp said. Um, here's chapter 12 of his letter to the Philippians. For I trust that you are well versed in the sacred scriptures, etc. Here it is. You shall believe in our Lord Jesus Christ and in his Father who raised him from the dead. Oh, but before that. May God the Father, may the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ himself who is the Son of God and our everlasting High Priest, build you up in faith and truth, and in all meekness, gentleness, patience, long-suffering, etc. So he calls him the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, and Jesus Christ. May these two people build you up in faith. Um, didn't sound like Polycarp's much of a most there. Here is Polycarp's dying prayer. This is in the Martyrdom of Polycarp, chapter 14. And here's what he says. May I be accepted uh, this day for thee as a fat and acceptable sacrifice according as thou, the ever-truthful God, hast, whoop, hast foreordained, has revealed beforehand to me, and now fulfilled, where I praise thee for all things. I bless thee I glorify thee along with the everlasting, along with the everlasting and heavenly Jesus Christ, thy beloved Son, with whom to thee and the Holy Ghost be glory now and to all coming ages. Amen. Um, oneness people, I'm aware of, do not glorify Father, Son, and 
the Holy Spirit and saying that they're with one another. Now, if those are too vague for you, let's go to Irenaeus. Let me, and if, if you're not sure if Irenaeus is spouting Polycarp's teachings, here's uh, from Eusebius' Church History, Book 5, Chapter 20. Um, and it's from a piece Irenaeus wrote. For when I was a boy, I saw you in Lower Asia with Polycarp moving in splendor in the royal court. He's writing to this guy, I think, Florinius. Um, for when boys learn, uh, grow, grow in their mind, become joined with it, and that I'm able to describe the very place in which the blessed Polycarp sat as he discoursed, his goings out, his comings in, etc., etc. And he remembered the, uh, the words of the apostles. These things being told by the mercy of God, I listened to them attentively, noting them down, not on paper, but in my heart. And continually, through God's grace, I recall them faithfully. So even as Irenaeus was writing that as a grown man, he remembered <clears throat> the teachings of Polycarp he heard as a young man. And he still recalled them by the grace of God. He was still loyal to them. So let's see, let's see uh, <clears throat> what Irenaeus believed about God. Well, here's uh, here's one. But the Son, eternally coexisting with the Father from a from old yea from the beginning, always refused the Father to angels, powers, archangels, virtues, etc. As against heresies. Book three, section nine. Okay, there's another good one. Um. Ah, here we go. It was not angels therefore who made us nor who formed us. Neither had angels the power to make an image of God, nor anyone else except the word of the Lord, nor any power remotely distant from the Father of all things. Irenaeus is reputed, uh, reputing, refuting, refuting the uh, Gnostic heresy. For God did not stand in need of these beings in order to accomplish what he had self-determined with himself beforehand should be done, as if he did not possess his own hands. Here we go. For with him always present were the Word and Wisdom, the Son and Spirit, by whom and in whom freely and spontaneously he made all things, to whom he also speaks, saying, Let us make man in our image and likeness. Genesis 1.26, and that's against heresies, book 4, chapter 20, section 1. So there's Irenaeus, and I just want to show you one more thing that Irenaeus said. Therefore, neither uh, would the Lord, neither would the Lord nor the apostles ever named as God, him who was not God, unless he were truly God. Let me scroll it down. There we go. Here, Scripture represents the Father is addressing the Son. He gave him, he gave to him the inheritance, uh, and subjected him to all things, enemies, blah blah blah. Prior to the destruction of the Sodomites, the scripture says, Then the Lord rained upon Sodom and Gomorrah, fire and brimstone from the Lord out of the heaven. For here it points out that the son, who had been talking to Abraham, had received power to judge the Sodomites for their wickedness. And this text following does declare the same truth. Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. In other words, he was saying of that, Oh, and then he talks about, talk about uh, the people who call the name God. To, to him who is anointed the Son, and him who does anoint. That is the point. In other words, Irenaeus believed, was, was saying, along with many other church fathers, that there were two manifestations of Yahweh during the destruction of Son Gomorrah. The Son was the manifestation who was on earth with Abraham. So, oneness folk, guys, um, apostolic students did not believe the oneness heresy. Um, it makes you really think, like in Revelation 5, when the one seated on the throne hands the Lamb a scroll, that what John meant was one person handed the scroll to another person. And that when Jesus was talking about being glorified that the glor with the glory that he had alongside the Father before time began, that it meant that uh, he existed by his Father's side in eternity past. Think about it.